Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you live from Hungary here in the Carpathian Basin. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week so far. This class we are looking at IELTS reading practice for high bands, especially focusing on some list of headings and true false not given questions today. This lesson is brought to you by, and this reading is coming from, our world-class IELTS preparation website, aehelp.com, for academic IELTS. And for the general version of the exam, check us out at gielts-help.com. I'll show you what those websites look like real quick while we wait for some more of your peers to join in. This is our academic IELTS website here. You can click that big red button to join. After you join, you get a My Student account. You can use this on your phone, tablet, and computer. Hi, students. Hi, members. I see Perunjay Shanghung, Zainab in the class. Hi, Pachu, and many others. Uh, once you're in your My Student account, you have six computer-based exams. You have a 100-hour fully interactive course. You have PDF exams as well. You have over 100 hours of video lessons, lots of audio CDs, and additional services that you can use. And if you're a general IELTS student, check us out here at gielts-help.com. Click that red button to join us there. Same idea there. Hi, Mohammed. Long time no see. Good to see you in class. If you have questions about the exam or our product, send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer any questions that you may have. You can get our exam books in paperback or soft copy from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. Today we're doing a reading. Tomorrow we will have a reading for members followed by a task one pie chart and then some more classes on Saturday. So for this class, we will focus on list of headings and true, false, not given questions. So um, this is our list of headings uh, here for this uh, reading that we are about to do. Now, before you read your list of headings options, you should read these. It's the only question that comes before the passage in the exam. Okay. So we should read these, but before we read these, we should read the title. Uh, seismic shifts, silent drifts. Oh, what could that mean? Um, who knows? All right. No problem. Let's look at the list of headings. Violent eruptions, magma, lava, new islands. Hmm. Maybe something about volcanoes. The destruction of Pompeii. Two continents become many. Okay. There's some continents there. That seems to be an interesting word that we can focus in on. Continents. Uh, fossil evidence. Adjacent continents, that's continents again, okay. Intuitive notion, the ring of fire, the invisible threat, Gondwana comes together, a hypothesis of unity, disunity, a mechanism to match the theory is found. Hmm, all right. So Bahar says maybe something about earthquakes, maybe. something. Paranjay says probably something about continental drift by the look of it. It's definitely lots of mention of continents. Okay, so read these uh, list of headings questions at home, paraphrase them on paper. Now, 
what should you not do with list of headings questions? You're probably thinking, well, that's kind of a weird way to start off. Ajitha, Jyoti, I'm glad you joined our uh, membership. That's great. Um, all right, so list of headings. Do not skim read the text and try to match words. Okay, that's a bad strategy. Do not wait for a list of headings answers to jump out at you. Okay. Do not choose answers that give details and not the main idea. Okay. Now, if you're a little bit lost, if you're like, what is Adrian saying? Do not skim read the text and try to match words. Do not wait for list of headings answers to jump out at you. Do not choose answers that give details and not the main idea. Okay, well, don't worry. We'll do this together and you'll see exactly what I mean. So the way to do these questions, okay, or answer these so that you get many of them correct. Read a paragraph. Ask, what is this paragraph about? Answer your question. It's a very important step. Find the closest match from the list. Okay, that's the right strategy for list of headings questions. And it's not too difficult. You will see exactly how to do this. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start reading. And then we will go through the correct steps. Here we go. Ready? Read with me. Seismic shifts, silent drifts. Let's read this together, okay? Read with me. I'm not reading for you. This is not a listening class. This is a reading class, so read with me. Let's read together, okay? If you can, read nice and loud. Here we go. When looking at a map of the world, it is natural to notice that Africa and South America seem to be able to fit together as if they are two parts of a former whole. It is this insight which led F Flemish cartographer Abraham Artilius in 19, or 1596 to put forward for the first time the idea that at one period the continents were in different places than they are today. It would take over 300 years for the theory to be fully developed and 50 years after that for the mechanism of the phenomenon to be discovered. All right, that's interesting. I understood some of it, some of it not so much. I definitely noticed that this person has an idea, something about a theory, something about a phenomenon. So now we ask, what is this paragraph about? So what is this paragraph about? Okay. So here's our first example question. What is the introductory paragraph about? Okay, now this is where many students make a mistake and they start searching for the list of headings. They look at the list of headings and they're like, oh, what is this one? What, what should this be? What should this be? No, 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 no. Stop that. Okay, uh, think about your own answer first. What is this paragraph about? One of the one of the easiest ways to make a mistake is start searching for a list of headings. So Omar says it's a theory. Uh, Zaid says it's a theory of continents and motion. 
Uh, Maxim says it's a theory that was introduced and developed. Okay. All right. So let's uh, take a look and see if any of these match. Okay. Here we go. So now that we have an idea of what it's about, now we can look for the appropriate answer. So here we have our list of headings. Which one of these for you seems to be the closest match for the theory? So a theory. Okay, which one is the closest match? in your mind. Okay. So Amrin says three, Maxime says 11. Hmm. I don't know about that. Zaid Nawafa says, I think it's number five. Okay. Um, many of you are choosing three. Where do you see the word theory here? So where are you seeing this word in here? I don't see anywhere the idea of theory or idea or any, any similar there. So... I don't know. I would go with um, number six. Why? Why would I go with number six? I think number six is the best answer. I don't see anybody get that one. Why? Why is number six the correct answer? Can anybody tell me? That's the one I would go with. Ah, Pachu says, because there's an idea. And guess what? Notion is a synonym for the word idea. Okay. Intuitive means when it appears or seems to fit together. Okay. We don't know the hypothesis of unity disunity yet. A mechanism to match the theory is found as a detail. Okay. So remember what I said, students. Do not skim read the text to try to match words. Do not wait for this answer to jump out at you. Do not choose answers that give details and not the main idea. Many of you got this answer wrong because you were looking at details and you were not looking at the main idea. The main idea in this paragraph, I'll go back and show it to you. The main idea here is there's a person called Abraham Ortilius who has an idea when he's looking at the map that different continents seem to be able to fit together. This is an intuitive notion. So when looking at a map of the world, it is natural to notice that Africa and South America seem to be able to fit together as if they're parts of a former whole. It was this insight, insight, intuitive, uh, natural to notice, intuitive, seem to be able to fit together, intuitive, okay? Idea, notion, okay? So that's where the answer comes from. This whole introduction is about an intuitive notion. It's about an idea that the continents seem to be able to fit together. It's not about the details that you see in here, okay? It's not about the details. Let's keep going. You'll get the hang of it. Let's go to the next paragraph. Keep practicing and it will become much, much easier to do this. It was not until 1915 that German geologist Alfred Wegener proposed the continental drift theory, which states that the Earth's crust is made up of many sections 
that float slowly over the molten mantle and core of the Earth. Wigner argued that in the past, the continents were all stuck together. He called this supercontinent Pangaea, which is Greek for all Earth. Wigner hypothesized that approximately 200 million years ago, this supercontinent began to break up and the pieces began to move away from each other. What is this about? What is this paragraph about? Again, answer the question. Ask it and answer it on your own. Do not look at the choices because it's very difficult, if not impossible, for the choice to jump out at you. Okay, so Zaid says it's something about the theory of Earth's history, uh, of its geography, right? Charlie Sen says it's maybe about Pangaea. Um, I don't think so. I think Pangaea is a detail. It's not just about Pangaea. There's Pangaea, there's Alfred Wigner, a German geologist. It's more than just that. What is it about? So Bahar Bahari says it's a hypothesis of continents. And Sudanshu says it's an explanation of the theory. Okay. Maxim says it's a German geologist's theory. Maxim, take it one step further. What is that theory? Right? Zainab says it's one that becomes a part. So one that moves into many. Okay. All right. So if you asked me what it's about, I would say it's about a theory that says the earth was one, then it broke into pieces. So this would be my question and answer. Okay. So question. What is body paragraph one about? Answer. It is a theory that all continents were one and now they are many. Okay. Okay, so body paragraph one, what is it about? It's a theory by this German guy. The continents were just one big continent before called Pangaea, but now there are many. That's, that would be my answer. And what is the closest match? So from the list, which one matches the closest? Yeah, Carolina, very good. So Carolina says it's the theory of a geologist that the continents are together and then they start to break up. So which one is it? Violent eruptions? No, destruction of Pompeii. Um, two continents? I don't think so. It just says Pangaea. That seems like one continent. Fossil evidence, adjacent continents, intuitive notion, nope, the ring of fire, the invisible threat, Gondwana comes together, a hypothesis of unity and disunity, a mechanism to match the theory is found. Okay, so notice what your fellow peers are saying. Some of you are saying three, and many of you are saying uh, ten. Many of you are saying it's going to be a hypothesis of unity and disunity, right? Okay. This is the example answer. So this is where you can check how well you're doing. Paragraph B is X. Why? Because hypothesis is theory. Unity is Pangaea, and this unity is many continents. Okay, this number 10 is clearly the closest match to what this paragraph is about. Okay, it can't be number three because it doesn't talk about two continents. I don't know where students saw two continents, but I did not see two continents mentioned in that paragraph. It talked about one supercontinent named Pangaea. 
Uh, again, students, careful. Don't think that the answer will jump out at you. If you're doing the list of headings by thinking that the answer is going to pop out, like one of those magic books, you know, where you open the book and then this castle comes out or the rainbow or some little house or something, those pop-up books, list of headings does not work like a pop-up book, okay? Answers do not pop up at you. If that's what you're doing, you're going to have a 50-50 uh, chance in these, okay? All right, so again, don't overthink it. Ask, answer, then choose. Let's keep going. You'll get the hang of it. Just take some practice. Let's go with C. Here we go. Read with me. Initially, Pangaea divided into two parts named Laurasia and Gondwana. Laurasia consisted of what is today North America, Asia, and Europe, whilst Gondwana comprised modern day South America, Africa, and Australia. These supercontinents eventually split apart further, resulting in today's continental configuration. It is interesting to note that today's continental alignment is just that. Millions of years in the future, the Earth's continents will appear very different. Given enough time, it is possible that the Earth's land masses will return to a Pangaea-like unified state. What is this paragraph about? Again, don't jump, ask and answer. So what is body paragraph two about? Answer. So Amir says it talks about continent splitting. Miriam says it talks about two continents splitting into many. Kleber agrees. I agree. Okay. What are the two continents? Gondwana and Eurasia. They become today's continents of North America, Europe, Asia, so forth. Yeah, that seems right. Okay. So which one uh, is the closest match to my answer? Okay, great. Now everybody's on track. Yeah, number three. Absolutely. Don't overthink it. Two continents become many continents. Yeah. So in your answer sheet for paragraph C, you put the Roman numeral three and you go on and you go like this. Nice and steady paragraph by paragraph. All right, let's do it. Let's go to paragraph D. Like I say, when you practice this at home, this strategy, the correct strategy, you will get the hang of it. Okay, here we go. Paragraph D. The evidence for continental drift is plentiful. The most common evidence is the discovery of the same type of dinosaurs in extremely different locations. The same type of dinosaur fossil will be found in northeastern parts of South America as well as northwestern parts of Africa. The logical explanation for phenomena such as this is that at one time these parts of the world were not only connected but adjacent. What is this uh, paragraph about? So what is body paragraph three about? Sudan Shu says it's fossil evidence. Vanessa said it's evidence. Evidence of what, Vanessa? It's not about the discovery of fossils. Violetta Castro Pereira says it's evidence to support the continental drift theory. So what is it about? It's uh, about evidence 
to support continental drift theory. Yeah, I would agree that that's what it's about. What's the closest match? So violent eruptions, the destruction of Pompeii, two continents become many, fossil evidence, adjacent continents, an intuitive notion, the invisible threat, Gunwana comes together, hypothesis of unity, disunity. What do you think? Roman numeral number four, that's right. I would agree. It's fossil evidence. So then for paragraph D, in your answer sheet, use the Roman numeral D. Careful not to accidentally do this. You'll get it wrong. Okay. So make sure that you have IV. Okay. It's five minus one. So have the correct order of Roman numbers. Okay. And let's go to E. Here we go. Read with me. The evidence for continental drift was discovered long before an explanation for it was found. It was during the 1960s that the theory of plate tectonics was developed. This new theory explained fully the nature of the Earth's crust, that it was broken up into many pieces that tended to smack into each other and pull apart from each other. In extreme cases, such as the Indian subcontinent, a plate's movement can be so severe that it causes massive mountains to be formed when the plate hits another. This is precisely what happened over the past millions of years with the Indian plate colliding with the Eurasian plate in the process creating the Himalayas, which include the tallest mountain on Earth, Mount Everest. Uh, what is this paragraph about? What is this paragraph about? Sandeep Batari says the theory of plate tectonics movement. Uh, Samaran says it is the history of continental drift. I don't think they say continental drift. Okay. Um, Sudanshu, it says something about colliding plates. Okay. Uh, M. Hussein Bari says theory of the Earth's crust moving. That's pretty good, M. Hussein Bari. I agree. Um, Arun says Earth's crust impacting. Sure. So... Yeah, so theory of the or the movement of the Earth's crust, the idea of plate tectonics. Sure. Yeah. Let's see if we have a close match. So which one of these do you think is the closest match to this idea of plate tectonics? Plate tectonics. Maxime says, it looks like 11, a mechanism to match the theory is found, um, which is what? It's number 11. It's plate, tec or it's, uh, plate tectonics, right? So plate tectonics, right? So a mechanism to match the theory is found. What is it? It's plate tectonics. Plate tectonics means the movement of the crust of the earth. So 11 definitely seems like the best match. There is nothing there about violent eruptions, magma and lava. Okay. Nothing there about that. All right. Okay. Um, there's something about mountains being formed, but nothing about violent eruptions or magma. All right. Uh, the Himalayas are not for formed by volcanic eruptions. It's actually the earth crunching together. Okay, um, so let's keep going here. The correct answer there was number 11. 
So what you should do for that paragraph is simply just put XI, okay? Remember, you're always trying to answer the question what the paragraph is about and finding the closest match, okay? The closest match is the mechanism is found, plate tectonics. Let's go to F. Read with me. Uh, by the way, students, the speed that I'm reading, do you think it's too fast, too slow uh, for the real exam? So if you're in the real exam, if you're in the real IELTS, the speed that I'm reading, is that too fast, too slow, or is it just right? What do you think? Sandeep says, eh, it's okay. Lamiz agrees, it's good. Zaid says, it's a bit fast. Vanessa says, it's too slow. <laughs> All right. Um, no, it's okay. All right, so the speed that I'm reading is absolutely okay. You can actually read even a little bit slower. Uh, you can read one passage in 10 minutes, even a little bit more, 11 minutes. The most important is that you understand about 70%. The big problem, the big problem why students think there's not enough time. Many students say that to me all the time. Well, there's not enough time. I can't read the passage. There's not enough time. It's not true. Many students feel there's not enough time because they waste a lot of time searching for answers. The trick is that you shouldn't search for answers. You should be able to answer them once you read the passage. If you're searching for every answer, yeah, there's not enough time for anything. There's not enough time for skimming, scanning, or for reading, okay? So here we go, uh, read with me. Uh, plate tectonics are not only responsible for mountains and the movement of the continents, they are also responsible for volcanoes. Volcanoes usually result from one of two plate configurations. They form in places where the plates are colliding or where the plates are pulling apart. In the first case, the plates come together, pushing against each other, causing friction and heat, which allows some of the crust material to melt, resulting in liquid magma. Because magma is less dense than the surrounding rock, it ends up rising to the surface, where it becomes a volcano. An example of this type of volcano is the famous Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed the city of Pompeii in 79 CE. The second type of volcano comes from divergent plates. These types tend to be underwater, as in the mid-oceanic ridges. Volcanic islands such as Iceland and Hawaii were formed by underwater volcanic activity, eventually spewing off enough matter to form land above water. Uh, what is this paragraph about in your own words? Should be pretty easy, this one. So what is this paragraph about? Yeah, Maxim said, volcanoes. <laughs> Sergey says, volcano. Sudanshu says, volcanic eruptions. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at how many times the word volcano comes up in that paragraph. I think maybe six or seven times that I counted in my head, right? So volcanoes, volcanoes, volcanoes. Volcano. Um, what's the closest match to volcano? What do you think? From all of these choices, which one is the closest as a synonym of volcano? And all of you are saying, yeah, it's number one, violent eruptions, magma, lava, new islands. Okay, for those students who watch these classes regularly, what type of paraphrasing is this? So this is one technique, paraphrasing. What type of paraphrasing is this? So you have synonyms, right? Like big is the same as large. That's called synonym paraphrasing. Uh, stay is the same as don't go. That's uh, called antonym negative paraphrasing. 
What type of paraphrasing is this one, this number one? It's my bonus question for our students today. Uh, Divya, this IELTS test is uh, absolutely no more difficult than uh, the official exam. It's the same level of difficulty. So what kind of paraphrasing? It's not synonyms, okay? So these are not synonyms. Violent eruptions, magma, lava, new islands. It's not synonym. There you go. Zainab says it's descriptive paraphrasing, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is called descriptive paraphrasing. Okay, because these words describe a volcano. It's like saying it's round, it's a fruit, it's delicious, it's red, it's an apple. Okay, it's descriptive paraphrasing. It's called descriptive paraphrasing. There's descriptive paraphrasing, there's synonym paraphrasing, antonym negative paraphrasing, there's grammatical paraphrasing, and there's expressive paraphrasing. That's all for another lesson, but you can get all of that information on our websites in the premium package. It's absolutely worth joining our premium package so that you can learn quickly and efficiently. Okay, so anyway, um, the last body paragraph is number one, okay, for F. So just put the Roman numeral one in there, okay? And now we'll go on to paragraph G, last one, okay? Golam, you cannot focus on keywords only. That will not be enough to get a high band score. Okay, here we go with paragraph G. Let's do it together. Let's solve this last question. Um, of course, read with me, read together. Of course, there's one final important result of plate tectonics, earthquakes. Earthquakes are perhaps the most terrifying of all natural disasters. They are practically invisible. They happen below the Earth's surface and have devastating results. Earthquakes happen along fault lines, places where two plates are colliding, diverging, or slipping past each other. In the case where the two plates are attempting to slip past each other, the most devastating earthquakes can occur. This is because friction does not allow the plates to pass each other until sufficient energy to counteract resistance has been built up. So the two plates rub against each other for centuries or millennia until one day they finally slip. This slip is what results in a sudden catastrophic earthquake. If this slip occurs in the ocean underneath the Earth's surface, it can cause a massive tidal wave known as a tsunami. If this slip occurs directly beneath a major city, massive destruction will result. There are many such cities at risk of these earthquakes, many of them along what is known as the Ring of Fire, surrounding the Pacific Ocean. These cities include Tokyo, San Francisco, Vancouver, and Santiago. Understanding plate tectonics reveals that it is not a question of if these major cities will get hit by an earthquake, it is only a question of when. What is this paragraph about? What is this about? We can keep it simple. Harsh says it's the threat of earthquakes. Kleber says it's the causes of earthquakes. Uh, Smaran, very nice. I love Smaran's answer. Smaran says it's about earthquakes and the slipping of plates or plate tectonics, right? Good. Yeah. So it's about earthquakes. and plate tectonics. Sure. Let's see the closest match. So which of these is the closest match to earthquakes? What do you think? Which one of these would you say is, ah, that's the closest match to an earthquake? 
So many of you are saying that's going to be number eight, the invisible threat. <coughs> yeah, I would say so. Okay, again, it's descriptive, right? Invisible threat, you can't see earthquakes, they just happen. It describes earthquakes. So that's good, okay? When you feel it, you're like, okay, that's going to be the closest match. Ring of fire, again, this is detail. This is just one part, an example in the paragraph. The paragraph overall is talking about earthquakes, the invisible danger of earthquakes. Okay, so eight is the best answer for that last list of headings question. And there again in your answer sheet for space 19, you would put Roman numeral eight. Okay, and then you'll get that correct. Um, also, students, don't second guess yourself, all right? So remember I told you what not to do for these... Um, List of headings questions, okay? Uh, do not skim read the text and try to match words. It won't happen. You notice like in this reading, if we tried to skim read and try to match words, it would have been impossible just because they didn't use those words, okay? So the words that you saw in the list of headings, you don't actually see in the paragraph. That would be too easy. You don't need to know English to look at a word and match the same word in a paragraph. Then the exam wouldn't make sense, okay? It wouldn't work. So you can't just look and match words in skim read. It doesn't work, okay? Don't wait for the answers to jump out at you. If you're reading the list and you're thinking, oh, the answer is like a pop-up book. You're just going to go boof in my face and go, oh, there's the right answer. It jumped out at me. It hit me. Um... No, it doesn't work like that. You have to think about the answer in your own mind. And again, students, be really careful. Don't choose answers that give the details, the examples. You have to choose the main idea. Okay? All right? Now, let's go on to true, false, not given. True, false, not given. I know many students like these questions. But again, they're not that bad when you know what to do and you know what not to do. For true, false, not given, do not skim read for these, okay? It's not possible. You cannot skim read for not given information. You will waste a lot of time searching okay it feels terrible watching students do that okay so don't do that all right um for true false not given do not read these before the passage they will only confuse you okay all right so instead use logic So use logic, ask important questions, number one, is it important for the passage? If yes, then given. If no, then not given. If given, is it true? Or false? Okay. Now, another do not is do not. Go back and look for every answer. You must answer at least half of these without going back to the text. OK, 
Okay. Again, students, if you are searching for every single answer and question in the reading passages, it will be very confusing. You will run out of time. You will get a lower band score than otherwise. And your brain will be a mush by the time you get to the writing section. So you're not just hurting your reading score, but you're hurting your writing score because your brain is going to turn into jello if you're searching for a whole hour in another language that's not your native language for 40 questions, okay? That is not a good way to do it, okay? So here we go. Let's take a look at the true, false, not given. And then uh, we'll uh, answer them as best as we can. So here we go. Number 20. It took over 350 years for the theory and mechanism of continental drift to be fully developed. Question. Is it important to know how long the theory of continental drift took to develop for the passage on continental drift? So is that important? Is this important? Yeah, it looks like everybody says yes. Yes, therefore it's given. Okay, now the next question. So now we know it's given. Now we've learned a very valuable piece of information that this is given information. So this is either a yes or a no, or it's a true or a false. It's in the passage, okay? Is it true that it took over 350 years for the theory and mechanism uh, to be fully developed? Is it true? Yeah, many of you are saying it's true. So true it is, that's the correct answer. Here, I'll show you where it's coming from, just in case you're like, well, maybe, I'm not sure about the fact that it's true or not. Um, it says, it would take 300 years for the theory to be fully developed. And now this is where many students might make a mistake. And 50 years after that for the mechanism. So theory and mechanism. 300 plus 50 equals 350. So it's true. Uh, make sure to respect that the exam is a thinking test. Okay, it's a thinking test. It's not just an English test. A student very cleverly said to me the other day, Adrian, I think the IELTS is an intelligence or an IQ test, or it's testing your thinking, not just your English. Absolutely, of course. That's why there's an academic version. If it were just testing English, you don't need two versions. You could just have one version of the test, right? Okay. So 350 years it is. Okay. Let's keep going. Number 21. The Earth's crusty shell is made up of plates which float slowly across the ocean. Is it important to know that the Earth's shell is made up of plates that float? So is that important for continental drift? I mean, the passage is on continental drift. So is it important to know? That the Earth's crust is made up of plates that move around? Yes, absolutely. Okay, that is the concept of continental drift. It has to be. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so yes, it's very important to know this. So we know that it's given. Okay. So it's absolutely given. Certainly that's important for continental drift. Is it true? So is it true that the Earth's crusty shell is made up of plates that float slowly across the ocean. So do the plates of the earth move slowly across the ocean? 
No. They don't float on the ocean. The ocean is on top of the plates. So this is false. Okay. This is definitely false. Right? The oceans are on top of the continental plates. Continental plates are much, much thicker than just the ocean. Okay. So the Earth's plates are on top of the Earth's crust, right? Not on top of the ocean. The ocean is on top of the plates. That's why when they crack and split, then uh, there's tsunamis, right? The oceans are smaller than the plates. Plates are much bigger. Okay, here we go. Uh, number 22, there is significant evidence that India was once attached to Antarctica. Is it important for the theory of continental drift to know that there's a lot of evidence that India was attached to Antarctica. Is that important to know? Uh, maybe, but I would say not so much. So here I would just go not given. Okay, it's possible that they talk about it, but I don't remember especially this word. Do you remember reading a lot about Antarctica together with India? I don't remember anything like that. So I'm just going to go with not given. Number 23, Mount Everest is a result of a collision between the Eurasian and Himalayan plates. So Mount Everest, is that important to know? Is it important to know what made Mount Everest? Yes, it's important. So yes, therefore we know that it's given. So is it true? Is it true that the Himalayan plate and the Eurasian plate crashed together to make Mount Everest? No, it's false. How do we know that? Okay, this is where your grade 11, grade 12 geography is important there is no such thing as a himalayan plate okay there's such thing as a eurasian plate and there's such a thing as an indian subcontinental plate but there's no such thing as a himalayan plate himalaya or the himalayas are the mountains not the plate okay now if you're really stuck for that you can search for this one because it's maybe a little bit more difficult if I had to search for this information what should I look for if I'm if I'm like well I don't know what would they call that in English do they call that a Himalayan plate um, what should I search for I can search for Mount Everest I clearly exactly Shang Hung says find Mount Everest yeah and I can do that so I remember that Mount Everest was somewhere at the end of one of these, and it's right here, right? Mount Everest, I read it, so I know it's here. So this is precisely what has happened over the past millions of years with the Indian plate colliding with the Eurasian plate. So the Indian plate hit the Eurasian plate in the process creating the Himalayas. Okay, so that's the right answer there. All right, so uh, students, again, one more time from today's lesson. Just a quick review, okay? List of headings. Here we go. Do not skim read the text to match words. Doesn't work. Not if you want to ban 6.5 or more. Do not wait for list of headings answers to jump out at you. That doesn't work, right? Don't choose answers with details. You're looking for the heading, not the example, okay? The best way to do it, read the paragraph, ask yourself what it's about, answer the question, find the closest match, all right?
That's what works. Okay. For true, false, not given, do not skim read for these because it's really tricky, if not impossible, to not to find not given information. Okay. Don't read these before you read the passage. They will just confuse you. If you read a lot of false and not given information, it will be confusing for your mind. Instead, use logic. Ask yourself when you read the statement, is it important for this passage that I just read? If it's a yes, then it's given, then it's going to be false or true. If it's not important for the passage, it's just simply going to be not given. Students, if you want a lot more strategies like this that work and you want to learn these in a structured, effective format, join our premium package at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gielteshelp.com for general. Both of those websites, we train hundreds of students every day, if not thousands, and many of them succeed in their exam goals. So check us out there. Also download our app, Academic IELTS Help. That is all the time I have for today. I will be back tomorrow with a reading class for members, uh, followed by a pie chart, task one example for everyone to chat and share on. That's it for me for today. Have an awesome rest of your Thursday. If it's late in your country, sweet dreams to all of you. And you're very, very welcome. Thank you for your positive feedback. Bye for now.